I love the show. I watched all of it in a day. I love that. Thank you. Can you talk to me a little bit about focusing on the humanity of this world instead of centering it around the Titans? I think that one of the great opportunities that we had in the show and that Chris Black and Matt Fraction, our co-creators, really leaned into in such a great and dynamic way is we had 10 hours of television. So we got to really lean into character-driven story, populated, of course, with our favorite Titans and, and have it be big spectacle and a globe-trotting adventure. But at the heart of it, we have this really juicy and dynamic family drama. We have romance that sort of stands the test of time. And and, and I think it's all the kinds of great pieces of TV that we show up for. It's it's a really, um, I think the emotional drama of the show, I think will hopefully be a, a welcome surprise to audiences who are coming for a really fierce entertainment, which we also deliver on. Definitely. And then one of my favorite parts was the portrayal of post-traumatic stress in this. Can you talk about why not only that was important to show, but how it kind of enhances the monster verse as a whole? Absolutely. You know, we always talk about the show is sort of set in the 912. It's 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 right after this world has learned that monsters are real. And obviously we have all too much familiarity with these sort of stark realities that suddenly we're facing where suddenly it's the day after we realize that COVID is now a thing and we're, you know, in lockdown or we have, you know, it is 912. Um, we, we're we grappling with so much as humans. We all have these existential crises. And I think that we always through genre are able to sort of grapple with real human issues uh, in an arm's length that allows us to feel at the end of it, we come out alive and stronger together. And I think that's always a satisfying story. But make no mistake, our story is escapist entertainment. It is fun. It is, you know, it's a fun ride. Um, and I, But I think that there's, you know, at the heart of it, you have a little bit of that catharsis. So I think it hits you in a way that feels really personal. But you're also going on a globetrotting adventure. I definitely agree. It's interesting you reference 912 because that is very much what I felt watching the pilot. Like that is what clicked for me immediately. So mm -hmm. really well done with that. Um, and then we finally get to see how Monarch was created and how ingrained it is with the uh, Randa name. What is one element of the lore you were really excited to dig into? I think it's just really exciting to, you know, one of the things we talked about is that our, our show is dancing within the raindrops of the movies that have already been made. And so what we had the the opportunity to do is look at things, uh, stories that hadn't been told. And we see in the films, we see sort of, um, you know, Monarch as a shadowy organization that we don't much know much about. And then by the more recent films, they're very dominant and proactive active organization. And we get to tell the story of how did that come to be? And if you've never seen any of the movies, you're coming on the ground floor and sort of learning about it as, uh, you know, big fans are also learning about it. So I think it's a, it's a place where old fans and new can come together and see a bit of storytelling that we, you know, the films didn't have a chance to explore. Fantastic. And then you, can you tell me a little bit about the parallel stories that are going on and because they do converge in a very kind of cool way throughout. But that was one of my favorite elements was exploring the past and the present. I think that one of the things that we um, have done um, intentionally and hopefully well is this whole idea of legacy. It's in the title of our show. Um, but we really believe in the story of... Um, how we pass things from one generation to the other. Um, we talk about the fact that, you know, hurt people hurt people. Um, we talk about the fact that there's, there's so, there's, for the good and the bad, there, there's a connection that we have to um, the people that we're born from, where we come from, and also how we can form new families and how that can be as empowering as the old ones. Definitely. And then what were you looking forward to exploring with Godzilla in this? I think that Godzilla has just been always such an exciting reference. He's always been a metaphor for so many of the human challenges from nuclear power to, you know, we joke about the fact that during the, the development of this, it keeps on shifting. It's global warming, then it's COVID, then, you know, it's now sort of international warfare. But I think uh, Godzilla has always been such an uh, iconic kaiju. He's, he's always been someone that is, people that don't know him as well think that he's a villain. Um, and, and he's much more complicated and fascinating than that. He's actually our protector. He, you know, he protects us from other Titans. He's not warm and cuddly. We don't, you know, want him in our backyard. He's going to destroy everything. But, but he, but it's a very sort of dynamic and interesting and fascinating monster to contend with. Definitely. And then did you have a new favorite Titan in this maybe? You'll have to tune in to see. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, what did you find most surprising about working on this, like the Monarch show? I think it was, um, you know, we have such an amazing cast of characters and actors. And I think that we have so many, for, for me, the talent that we got to work with behind the scenes um, was really um, not necessarily a surprise, but a, but a revelation that was so enjoyable. It was really, you know, sometimes you work on these things and um, and you don't have the luxury of having people that are so like-minded, who are so passionate, who are working so hard and so bringing their A-game. And so this is one of those um, um, shows that was so much fun to make um, because everyone was uh, was as in love with the story as the next person. 
I love that. And then can you talk to me a little bit about Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell and how they work together to create this singular character? They had so much fun working on this uh, show. They really, you know, they've been approached a lot about playing father and son, and they love the idea of playing the same character in two different timelines. You know, there's always that choice as a producer um, where you're looking, do we de-age the actor for a previous storyline or do we cast an entirely new actor? And we had Wyatt there who, you know, who has so much of Kurt's DNA in him. He literally looks like a young Kurt, but they're also different people. And they had so much fun connecting the two of them or Kurt would sort of become less Kurt and become more Wyatt and Wyatt become less Wyatt and become more Kurt. And they would meet somewhere in the middle and really think about how people change over the course of time so that it was okay for Wyatt to be a little bit different. Because when you look back at a former youthful version of yourself, you're not exactly who you are now either. So they were really calibrating who that character is over the course of decades. And it was so much fun to watch. Yes, it definitely was. And then for you personally, is there a Titan that you would like to see Godzilla fight in the future, whether in the show or a movie, just generally speaking? I mean, where to start? I think that, you know, it's, I think that when you, when you get into any kind of Titan battle, it's like, they're, they're all there and ripe for the taking. I think that one of the things that movies, the movies have done so well in showing us is that there's always a new way in that, you know, and a new surprising battle and there's new energy. And I think that there's, you know, in the MonsterVerse, there's so many, um, different, um, kaiju that I'd love to see tackle each other and, and and do it again. Definitely. And is there anything in the MonsterVerse lore that maybe hasn't been explored this first season that you would like to explore if there's a season two? There's so much that we would love to explore. I mean, we, you know, we're, we all have big ideas and ambitions and it's going to be up to Apple viewers tuning in to see if we get a shot at doing that. Well, I really, really hope you do. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Like I said, the show is fantastic and I'm hoping for a season two. Thank you so much.